Okay, so. Um, so we're now we're going to talk about theories for all of these things. And this is going to be an interestingly complicated history as well. So we've mainly gone through data. Um, a little bit now for river networks, but it's mainly been about data, I think, is what I've shown you. Okay. And we've seen we've tied ourselves in knots. But generally speaking, on the theory side, people by this point have decided it's, when it comes to the biology, it's a three quarters law thing. It's just there. So now the game is to prove it with a theory, right? Um, <coughs> so that's, right, it's game over. Right? So now we've got to come up with a beautiful story for it. And it's there, and you will, you know, you'll win fame and acclaim, right? So uh, McMahon, who was a mentor to Strogatz, if some of you will know his name, and I've mentioned him quite a bit. Um, Watson Strogatz, of course, for Small World Networks, but Stro Steve Strogatz has done a lot of cool things, especially around synchronization. Anyway, so that's a connection there. Um, so he was at Harvard, I think, did, uh, talked about elastic similarity. So this is really allometry. Um, <coughs> and he was, by this point, he's like, well, where's this three-quarters thing? So his claim is that it's to do with the shape scaling um, of shapes of organisms scaling with, scaling with quarter powers. Uh, this is bad. He does cite this Hemmingson, and this is the crazy Danish uh, booklets that are just bananas um, that have like slime mold and stuff in them, things made up. Right? This is the one that essentially assumes three quarters to be true, and it's just really fitting the um, y intercept. So this appears, there does seem to be evidence for this kind of scaling for ungulate legs, right? That they do have allometric scaling, they aren't just simple isometrically scaled up things. That's one. Um, so it's just sort of a very rough statement. You know, it does, he, hasn't, he doesn't have some beautiful story for everything. Uh, and we'll get to this later, but sh the shape and how metabolism should work is never really connected. And I just, so let me see if I can say, uh, we'll come back to it, but just give you the idea that if we have, say, a collection of spherical cows, right? So they're scaling up, and we imagine they're, you know, I mean, you imagine just normal cows scaling isometrically, but spherical cows are funny. So they're growing in size. Uh, and then you have pancake cows, right? They're pancakes with legs. And they're scaling, but they're not getting thicker. Right? They're getting thicker very, very slowly, right? Then the surface area ratio to volume is much higher in those, those pancake ones, right? So they give off heat much faster. It's a, sort of a bad situation, right? They're, so they, they, you would think that's uh, problematic. You would you'd need a, you, you, it wouldn't be a great sort of system to run. And then you also have to think about the, how the network inside that thing works. And we'll get to that later. That's a bit more complicated. Because it's not just the surface area. You do have this network from a single supply, the heart, somehow supplying that thing. So we have to think about how that scales. And it turns out, well, well spoiler, um, because science, uh, that we are, uh, what we'll find is that it only matches up for isometric scaling, that the network structure makes sense with the um, heat given off story, right, with the surface area. Right? So if, if they're mismatched, if you have an allometrically growing shapes, then the network can't match up. The way the network will scale can't match up with how the surface area scales. We'll come back to it, but I want you to have that idea. And that, I think, is a really beautiful thing. Yes. Okay, so here's the sort of thing. This is a science paper. Um, and just you know, messing around. So someone's been me measuring chest circumferences of monkeys um, <coughs> and things like that. And he's playing around with uh, trees, right? Trees have a slightly different story going on, potentially. Um, <coughs> do they, though? I don't know. So this 0 0.63 here would be sort of like this is uh, 5 eighths, maybe. Mm -hmm. Anyway, sort of just points to a little bit. If you, you can dig into it some more if you want. Um, OK. <coughs> this is interesting. This is actually Hemmingson again. Um, so has a suggestion here, perhaps, that there's a 2 thirds power, right? Possibly a 10k thing. There, there it is, 0.69. Oh, god, such a mess. <coughs> and you can see that departure in that graph up there for, for larger things. Uh, and this is this is for surface area, yeah. I have this. I have a memory that some there was some effort to measure the surface area of cows with by painting them, 
and how many clicks of the roller it took. I mean, it's kind of tricky. I mean, you could, you know, unanimal the animal and, and you have a, a skin to measure, but that's um, you know, it's also not, you know, like, that might not work out either. What's that? Yeah, so he's right, gets a little, that's not ideal, yeah. <laughs> um, having some... Yeah, so that, you know, that's interesting. This was actually, this was actually a surface area plot, you know. And he, you know, tons of citations here, right? There's a, um, you know, horses and, <laughs> wow, a ring snake? That seems tricky, yeah. Although it may be easy to measure, right? You just measure the length and then multiply by the, we'll put a little tape measure around the snake. Can you imagine, I mean, people with tape measures and snake, I mean, it's just like a disaster, right? Uh, some of these will be easier than others. Um, but the, see those names, Benedict, Benedict Brody, Hemmingson. Oh, I hope he did this well. I don't think so. Frogs were in there. Fair enough. Yep. How much does it take to paint a frog? Unbelievable. <coughs> but an interesting, tricky thing. And then they have sort of folds and so on. And then when you think, yeah, so that's, that's a problem. Pratchett surface area is larger than it should be, obviously. Um, <laughs> I try not to put this in photos, but he kind of has an udder. He has a little, a little pink belly, and he kind of has, so he's a bit of a moo cat. You know. Yeah, I know, we're trying to lose weight for it. Anyway, it's not working out. Um, <laughs> what was that? We have just polite conversation. It's all right. It's usually about the humans involved, about how much we've <laughs> fed him. There are strict rules on the wall now, and like, do not fill past here. <laughs> uh, but he's very cunning. Okay. Um, yes, yes. What was I thinking about the other day? There's some... Um, okay, so there's a game called Nakat... To me, does anyone know there's a game where you basically, it's a Japanese game, it's like a nice little 3D thing, and you have to <laughs> buy treats and um, cat things and put them in your backyard? You have, okay. Interesting game, right? So uh, it turns out my oldest one, the 15 hour sleeper one, we looked after a neighbor's cat for a while, became very attached, and then had to go back. Um, and then she played that game until we eventually adopted Pratchett, which was basically her going to the Humane Society over and over again for therapy, and then eventually, you know, we adopt this cat. Um, but it does lead to the suspicion that cats made that game, right? <laughs> In their efforts to harness humans, which clearly is why the internet was invented, um, they've gone one step further with the video games. It's very clever. Totally worked in our case. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's look at some madness then. I think we've looked at some madness, but this is really strange. This is a 1977 Journal of Theoretical Biology paper. It's about three, three pages. It just flat out says, well, what if biology is somehow four-dimensional, right? There's some sort of extra foldy bit in there, maybe fractal. I'm not sure if this person even says fractal, that, that we're not really figuring out. Because if it's going to be this three-quarters thing, this is the simple observation. If uh, surface area scales is mass to two-thirds in 3D, but it scales as mass as three quarters in 4D, right? So if, so, and I mean, they're sort of touching on something that's possibly a, maybe works out, right? Because I mean, say, you know, our lungs basically fill space. I mean, that, so that there is this feature of biology that's you know, trying to, you know, we have fractal structures in us. Obviously the branching networks we've talked about, but say, say the lungs, I mean, the, I don't know if it's really true, but it's like, um, you know, tennis court, right? Was sort of always the rough idea of, how much um, area that we have in here if you put out the alveoli in a very bizarre and Hannibal Lecter-like um, experiment. Uh, anyway, so, uh, sorry. See that ad? That's not good. We shouldn't be in that thinking space. Okay. So, so, so fair enough. Yes, you know, sort of maybe it's not really a fourth dimension like the twilight zone or something, but it's like there's some scaling and we'll see a ridiculous thing again a bit later on. But this was pretty nuts. It just sort of says four dimensions would work, right? Because then it would be four minus one over four. Yeah. Really, it's a church. Yeah, it's pretty silly. Yeah, some strange people. 
Well, you make up stories. If you're a monk and you're really into it, you can make it happen. Yeah. Yeah, so, so that's, a, that's a... I don't think that happened in here. Um, let's open the, the, the tome of Bloom. It would be great if it was related to the Arrested Development Blooms, but I don't think so. Okay, so may have committed, committed some light treason. Uh, oh, Schmidt-Nielsen, which I haven't talked about that. So here's the scaling. So this is a value close to it, right? Here are all the things. Rubner with the dogs measuring the things. Um, here's McMahon, as we've talked about. Da da da. Let's see. See, it's really short, actually. It's just these things. Put a pie in there. Very nice. Bull barking. Right? So he's citing some, some math. Um, wow. And then said, this is just really unnecessary. I mean, this is the volume of the sphere, right? <laughs> with gamma functions, the full business. You don't. A little bit overkill for what we're doing, right? It's just an envelope situation, people. Um, look, it's just, I mean, this is fantastic. And then says, then, then, then here's our scaling, right? I mean, this is all a bit too much, but basically it should be just volume uh, or area scales as volume to this. And this is n minus 1 over n. I mean, also, I mean, just from a taste point of view, n is not, a, not for dimension. It's a number thing. Like, this is just hurtful. Okay. It is funny, there are real tastes and cultures in the way people annotate things, like computer scientists just don't care. You know, they're just gonna have a variable and it'll have a name and maybe an underscore, fine. To the power of five. You know, they'll just do it. And you can read it, it's like connected to the things, and that's fine. Pure math gets very, you know, they're into Cyrillic or whatever, it just like goes right into Gothic things, you know, fine. That's also cool. Um, there are some really, there's some beautiful alphabets that we have not really uh, used. Um, which I think would be fun. I mean, Greek obviously is a great place to go. Oh, yeah, yeah. I need to get that one out. Um, there's a nice little network which is, you know, in English people typically say it's all Greek to me. There's a nice little network of what languages say, which language is their Greek. And for a lot of them it's Greek, a lot of them it's Chinese. But I think for the German it's Spanish. Anyway, so it's kind of fun. It's all Spanish to me. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so just saying it, just, I'm just saying it. I'm just saying this is possible. Maybe, maybe the physicists don't really understand. Uh, you know, they've been talking about 10 dimensions by this point, and 29, was it, for string theory? And then they went to 10, and they all rolled up tight, right? So maybe one of them is rolled up tight. That's where Pratchett's got an extra one. So I don't really, it doesn't really go much further than this. It's like, just here. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't looked at this for. <laughs> so there you go. But you're right. We're gonna we're gonna make length out of other ways. Yes. Yes. And and so there's t let's see if it says time. Mechanic, okay. Ratios of quantities to determine mechanical stability. It's like, okay, we're just like running, we're just like fossicking around in the drawer to find another thing that looks lengthy. Yeah, wow. Energy, just, yeah. So, maybe. It's pretty funny, right? But that's just been sitting around and, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, dear. Looks good. You can throw in a gamma function, it g gave it a bit more. Um, you know, panache, right, okay. <laughs> Obviously a bit silly. I think that's, uh, we should go with that.